<laughs> All right, we're fucking live with you're our welcome. fucking dear, the dear, the, the very dear, Dwayne Bannon Harrison. How are you, sir? <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. It's uh, smelling great in here. Um, <laughs> in our pissoir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's different. Um, but now I'm feeling good. It's been a fantastic day. What else could you ask for? Good people. Uh, yeah. Beautiful lunch. And here we are. Yeah. To fill everyone in, I think we had Dwayne down at um, P&V, the, <coughs> the bottle shop down in New Town, to sort of take us through what he does, which is um, you know, talk about Indigenous culture and, uh, and the awareness of that or the lack of awareness should be probably more yeah in our, in our case it's very much the lack of awareness why don't you tell us so why don't you start off by telling us what you do where you come from your story like a you know like a uh yeah where you, the, yeah your story where what brings you to twin the what, what makes you arrive in 2020 yeah well it'd be remiss of me not to sing up country so i might just do that for you guys sure thank um, you and uh just want to acknowledge uh you know the countries that we're we're, we're all listening and working and playing and growing. Um, this is a little song from uh, me to, to everyone else and to the old people. That song is Thank dedicated you. to the old people um, and, and the elements and, um, you know, it's really important that we bring in as much as of that old tongue and language and um, when, I, when I say tongue, um, you know, it's, it's that language that, that we bring and the, the language that we're trying to revive and um, there are around about 600 dialects of language all around the nation, so... Um, shout out to uh, the first people of this country, and I suppose this is probably going abroad too. And first people f- of all the all the continents. Yeah, on my mum. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, look, um, it's an honour to be here, and I suppose what brings me to 2020, um, you know, sitting on in this studio in the middle of the city, in an ex urinal. Um, <laughs> 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 it's paint such a picture. It's, yeah, uh, it's, it's fancy with some it? uh, candles and yeah. You know, uh, like I said, I, I don't think I've ever been in a room full of uh, men with candles like this before. <laughs> but I'll take it. Um, we try to do it at least once a week. Yeah, yeah. Really grounds us. <laughs> beautiful. Grounds us in our masculinity. Yeah, it's important. <laughs> it is. It's important. So, I think um, yeah. Look, guys, uh, you, you got a fair sort of whack of what I what I uh, what I do. I suppose from a uh, a cultural competency or you know, it's just, just a flash word but you know cultural awareness point of view um just enlightening people to um the narrative um the truth telling uh you know the tradition um and just some genuine caring and, and empathy um and inclusiveness you know and and mm. i think a, a when don't get me wrong, I, I can be quite robust and forthright with truth telling. And like I said to you guys this morning, I love bigots. I love I love <laughs> the way that um, they they drive me in a, in a way of um, uh, you know consolidating why I do what I do. Um, but uh, like I said before, that's that's not for any individual to change, but collectively as we. This, this earlier today, you felt everybody jump on that that canoe or the you know, bomagui, the big canoe, mm. um, and, and we and we we sail together. Um, and uh, I believe again, it's it's a part of um, everybody's uh, business, or it's a part of everybody's uh, journey to connect with the first people of, of this country. Um, again. Government policy has denied us that. Education has denied us that. Uh, that that haven't had the opportunity. But in 2020, we now have a, a whole heap of you know, unreal 
and amazing things going on, successful people doing incredible things from filmmaking to, you know, act- actors, n- musicians. You know, we're, we're not just black fella, um, you know, people that, that are Aboriginal people and a good Aboriginal people are doing, you know, certain areas. Mm. Um, we're just as good as anyone else, if not better. A- a- and that's... Not a us against them thing. It's the changing the mindset and the narrative that Aboriginal people, yes, are, are there and we're successful as well as. And um, again, I had a cheeky, cheeky jibe of mainstream media and you know what they sort of push out towards us and and the, and the lens that is portrayed. Um, but like like you guys know, you know, this is you're starting to buy into that process, and mm-hmm. and, and the more people that buy into that process by <coughs> number one engaging with someone in their community, whether it's someone they grew up with, um, elders, people in their in their spectrum, um, you know, whoever it is that you can connect with, um, I encourage that. And I encourage, again, uh, we spoke about it in depth and here we are today in a, in a unique place, but we're, we're <laughs> conversating, right? We're, dialogue, yeah, yeah. we're dialoguing and, and we're getting to know each other better. Yeah, I suppose that was one thing that um, maybe surprised me today in what you spoke about was I'm sure you probably do different levels of different talks for different people, different whatever the situation is. But for us, it was very much... The context was very much of right now, like, as in like the current politics, the current media, like the, the all the obstacles that are still in its way. It's not. This is not about like learning about you know the way indigenous people farm the land. This is about like this is still what's going on, very apparent, and how hard it can be to still access the type of information that you're mm. like putting forward. Like you know, we sat in a room full of Australian people who. Barely heard a fucking word of that before. Like, it's quite mm. quite amazing. Yeah. Shocking. Yeah. Um, did I feel you want to jump in there? No, no. Oh, look, I, I just, said, I you just, you just gave me that look. I, will, I thought I was going to jump what, in. I will always jump in. But no, no. You, you, All right. You respond um, to that. Well, I'll respond to that. Yeah, look, it, it is. Uh, and you've seen and still, and I look forward to going back to the team after um, – we leave uh, paradise in here. Um, but, uh, <laughs> You're never leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to wait for that door to lock. <laughs> There's no <laughs> way out. <laughs> um, but um, no, look, yeah. And and again, I, I don't differ from the fact. And, um, I chatted with our good friend Mike uh, earlier and just sort of said, nothing shocks me, uh, you know, surprises me sometimes. But yeah. we... We just need to be able to have that conversation, and and as you know, the the, the questions and the the genuine holy holy shit, we've got a lot to learn. Mm. Um, moment. Um, that's my job. I'm 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 there to teach people. You heard the way I entwine my my magic, and I really, I really love the 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 awesome uh, platform I was given today to really work work my magic and I know you guys felt that I don't often get to, to dialogue like that because I, I knew number one I had a, a target audience that gets it um, in a sense that were, were more importantly they were open to it mm. um, but you're right there, there's a different tone a different mannerism um, as the saying goes there's many ways to skin a cat brother you know? yeah, yeah. yeah we say that a lot <laughs> yeah <that's laughs> right. it's, I think it's it's an acknowledgement of the fact that life's imperfect right you know like that and it's it's not about how you fucking get it done it's the it's the it's the end it's the skinned cat that you're after it doesn't it doesn't matter fucking how you get there yeah. so w- whether and I find it really interesting like uh, to, to you know your approach you, you mentioned in the training today that it was you know seven ten years ago it was far more robust far more challenging from what it sounds like than it is now and it seems like it's been tempered and it's like but the goal's not changed but the, the methodology might have changed and adapted and evolved in response to your own experiences and going like you oh, know maybe it's not working the way i want to do or or you've just had to change your heart even though you've had kids you're watching them grow up they have fuck kids just told fundamentally change the way you come at life yep. but ultimately it's the same cat you want skinned you still want the skinned cat hanging on the fucking wall mm. and then it's um Look, uh, <laughs> it's kind of gruesome. You know what I mean? it's it's cat. Cat. Whoa! Kids <laughs> 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 killing cats. We're so. really sorry about all them cat lovers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I was in the fucking bar last night. There's fucking YouTube. pictures of cats on the fucking toilet walls. Are freaking me the fuck out. Kitten yeah. photos. Yeah. Fuck that shit. That's terrifying. Wow. <laughs> you just, just been in a room full of kittens and cat photos. Like Not weird. a good place. Can I ask how he got there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with a belly full of mushrooms. Yeah, <laughs> mushrooms. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it was actually the menu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic! It was so good. That no, was great. Um, so look, I wanted to ask you about um, 
yeah, obviously, you know, how you got here mm. in, in kind of a little more depth. Like, yeah, yeah. what did you do previous to this work and how did you fall into it? And what drove you? Because, you know, if you're, you're, you're one man mm. representing uh, a, a small pocket of, of, of the UN nation yep. that is a representative of a wider culture yep. as a, taken as a whole, which we learnt so deeply today. Like a, the, the multiculturalism of Australia didn't start in the 1940s. It's been here for 60,000 years Aye. and spread through. And I that's a, a real wide awake a moment for me today. But may I just say like Beautiful. that level of multiculturalism, it's always been here. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and so complicated and so intricate in the way it, it dealt, and just that tiny insight. Such a huge land, like bigger than Africa, like Europe. Like it's, mm. of course, like yep. so it all fucking makes sense. Yeah, it? it does. Yeah. But never, never taught, never, never explained. Um, but yeah, how did you? What's your personal story? Like how you kind of grew this voice and this mm. energy to educate. Which, and I may just make another comment is is really humbling that. A representative of, of a of a of a group of people who have been so poorly treated, and uh, and uh, you know disinfra- dis- dispossessed from their land and their culture, yep. to treat us to to come with to to into our room today, um, and speak to us with such kindness and generosity about educating rather than sitting there and finger wagging and lecturing, and it's, yeah. it's such a huge thing. And yeah. just want to yeah know your personal story, how you arrived in this really. Beautiful and unique place. Yeah, well, first and foremost, uh, I wasn't the chosen one. It chose me, so hold that thought. Um, my uh, again, it'd be remiss of me to not acknowledge my grandfathers, both um, you know my grandfathers and my grandparents, and obviously you know I'm gonna get down the whole. You know, this is a moment of uh, acknowledging everyone in my life, but, but my grandparents, um, especially my grandfathers, have been huge in my life. Um, my uh, my mum's dad is from Loch Lomond in Scotland, uh, so I'm a, pr- I'm a proud uh, Celtic supporter. Um, <laughs> and was was taught about that in my early age. He taught me to cook, as you guys know. I'm, yeah, I'm okay. I go Just all right in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, He's fine shit. Yeah, he was, a, he was a galley cook. Um, at 13, he oh, really? in, he jumped in on the ocean liners and went around yeah, the world. Wow. And um. You know, my, my early memories of, of, of Pop um, Robbie, I don't think he'd listen to this podcast, but I might send it to him. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, he, he's a special man and, and still there um, in my life and uh, was instrumental. Um, but obviously my more known for uh, as, and I carry, I proud, proudly carry my grandfather's name, Bannon, uh, and uh, and also Harrison, and, and that's obviously my grandfather, Uncle Max Jal Abdullah um, who is an elder here in the Sydney uh, area, like lives in Sydney now, but from uh, Wallaga Lake Aboriginal Settlement. So it's a shout out to my home community way down the far south coast. Um, but uh, that's where a lot of our families, where my dad grew up, um, and like I said to you guys before, uh, generations of family go back nine generations to that to that community and all those homelands down there. So um, that's my acknowledgement to, to really, you know, in my, my ancestry that truly give, gave me all the ingredients to what I do now, you know, effectively. Like I never thought that I would, um, again, be, be working with the best people in food and wine. <laughs> um, you know, I always loved it and always had aspirations, but, but, it, but fuck, I never, I never went searching for that. It, yeah. it, it was something that just fell in and... I'm absolutely uh, adoring, you know, the people in the industry and how eager they are and um, there's not a great deal of cultural awareness happening in the culinary and hospitality industry and um, I know that's something that um, they're open to. Anyway, um, I suppose, uh, yeah, look, it it goes back and it's a pretty deep story. Um, I might as well do a shameless part plug to my own podcast. Yes, uh, please. Uh, Bring Back the Warrior is my podcast. So anyone that wants to search that, um, Apple, Spotify, Google, or your, or your main gadgets and gidgets. Um, uh, and also run a, a second podcast, which is uh, Secret Men's Business with Dwayne and Andrew. Don't be deterred, ladies. You can also listen to it. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty interesting dialogue where the guys heard some of the, the ripper scenarios that me and Andrew uh, conversate about. Um, he's a self-proclaimed uh, dork, dorky uh, corporate from Canberra, um, so we couldn't have had different backgrounds and come together like this. At the, well, we have to do it virtually, but uh, you know we come together and we talk on the same same show about that. So, my story, um, I'm just going to go real real sort of quick, but I'll, I'll go to a ten year old boy, and the ten year old boy, um, <coughs> he's uh, he 
he's got a, a, a very interesting story. I'm actually writing writing a book or I'm attempting to. I've uh, got a manuscript together. Um, so i got about 25,000 words out. No, I need wow. a bit more, but uh, it's, it's there. Um, story edit was a bit you know, brash, but I think I'm, think I'm okay. <laughs> so when I get some time, I'll, I'll keep... It's huge. It's, it's, it's a big healing. Yeah. It's a big healing and a big therapy. So yeah. try to bring, bring me back to that 10-year-old boy and... Um, uh, yeah, I don't want to sort of bore the audience with any. You know, I heard it's you know, interesting time frames. This podcast is over, but uh, <laughs> um, but uh, I think the point is that, that ten year old boy um, was disconnected. He was assimilated a tad, um, but he was loved and nurtured. And um, the plot to where that goes is uh, mum and dad split when I was eighteen months. Spent a bit of time, you know, in and around the community on Wollaga, and I was only eighteen months when I was taken taken obviously away with mum when mum and dad split. So it's a common narrative, you know, common story. Remarried, yeah. had um, two younger brothers and a younger sister, um, but they were very uh, very different looking to me. So here I was, this brown boy uh, on this journey, had a Scottish pop that, that was around and really looked after me, and uh, and all of a sudden I, I had two two good friends up the road. Um, I also want to declare that. I come from very humble beginnings. You know, Department of Housing, you know, House Commission. House Commission's my old. That's the way I was. You know, yeah. House Commission in my language and in in my time, grew up my whole life until I was in my mid teens. You know, where we finally got a private rental, and that was a big deal. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Mum. I remember Mum going into Salvo. So so we struggled. Is the is the story. Yeah. But we were loved and we had everything we needed. You know. Um, so anyway, uh, I was living out in the community and I mixed a lot with Indigenous kids and Aboriginal kids and don't forget, this is a 10-year-old boy. Um, and one day I was at a at my friend at my, at my mate's house and I was darker than them. I was darker than one of the twins and uh, one of their aunties said, who's your mob boy? And I sort of went, uh, I'm just living down the road, you know? And, and one, of the, one of the twins said, he said, um, no, nah, he, he's a white fella. She said, like, fuck, he's a white fella. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. one of our mob, you know. Amazing. And I remember those Powerful. words and I couldn't say wow. that in the book, but I can maybe. But, um, yeah, you can. You know, <laughs> but that, as you can feel, the power in that, that yeah. artist. She was a beautiful lady um, and she just sort of gave me the truth. Didn't know from a bar of soap, literally just said hello. And she she, she gave me that that truth. Um, I then went back and um, I, I, I cried at the dinner table. I bored my eyes out and... Uh, and mum said, what's wrong, son? And I had my stepdad around, you know, we live in this sort of family. And it sounds a bit weird, you know, when I talk to people that how can you be this brown boy when you look at photos and you're brown and your brothers and sisters are, you know, are white. And <laughs> yeah. You know, like there's this really weird sort of narrative going on. And I've had to accept a lot of that through the book, right, you know, attempting to write the book. Yeah. And and um, anyway, I, I used to get visits from this black black man, old black fella, Um that I knew was Pop, and I didn't really know why I called him Pop. But of course, that's my biological grandfather yeah, right. that was always watching me uh, as I was growing. Um, so, you know, look, mum and dad split wasn't as it is. It's, it can't be not always amicable. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I found out that day when I said, am I a black fella? Why are these fellas calling me a black fella? You know? And then mum told me, told me who I truly was. So, really, brothers, my, my story starts, I suppose, from there where... Fucking fireworks just get boom, you yeah. know, and you're like, ooh, ah, uh, it's it's. I suppose there's many people out there listening that have had that moment in their life. I, I would I would imagine someone that's learned about adopt being adopted or mm. in that way, even though that wasn't quite my story, but it was very similar, you know, in terms of, well, you are who you, uh, you are who you're. Oh, how do I word this? You're not who you thought you were, but you actually knew who you were. That doesn't make any sense at all, but that's how you feel. Yeah. You know, you you had this moment, and um, <coughs> kind of so, I've, so I've gone sense. pretty deep on you guys here. It's but beautiful. this is where, this where is I'm exactly at. this is yeah. exactly what we yeah. where we like going. With the, yeah, you know, if we can sit and talk for, for about. You know, Mike Benny and his uh, desire to drink wine for three hours, and we can go deep with you. <laughs> but this is this is the whole purpose of the yeah. podcast is to actually get to yeah. the get to the fucking guts of things yeah. and yeah. and to and to share vulnerably, vulnerably yeah. because yeah. this is what learning is. And and like you said, you know, in your training today, and in your conversation with us today, um, you know, the, it's about it's about communication and and growing knowledge and relationship yeah. and deepening. That's this is the way we get through. Where we are, I'm where we so find ourselves. So I'm you don't so need to apologise about I your can. story and go and deep and with that, us, brother. And that sort of springboard to be 
confronted with such a catalyst in life as mm. could potentially and maybe you know rightly so and the evidence is here in front of us like catapulted you more into that world to really fucking find out about it you know it's one of these things it's like you know you you always get there one day when you're surrounded by something that's like 100%. That's, you know, we we'd always use that ex- example in edinburgh you never no one ever goes no one in edinburgh goes to edinburgh castle yeah. because you're always like oh, i'll get there one day you just never go yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like yeah, yeah. and it's, yeah. it's like when it's confronted with you and, and you've just yeah. you feel that you've missed out on so much so you got so yeah. much to catch up on it yeah. must have been a sort of real spring into 100%, action 100 percent, and 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 it's sort of at that age that you know if you go back to where you were 10 you still Still quite young, right? You know, and you're probably old enough to start, you know, chemically in the brain. I know you're doing some things. You're going into your preteen, so all that was going on. But uh, yeah, so it, so you're right there, brother. It it really sort of started to springboard me, and I'm the ultimate fucking jigsaw puzzle put together. You know, I can, yeah, from right. my from my journey, I'm fucking good at it. You know, I can pull a piece of that puzzle over there from six years ago and go. Tsh- and put that back in and that that's been my life story so um i suppose then you know as if you were a betting man you'd probably have i'd be i'd be you know betting probably a thousand to one to to do what i do do today but yeah. there was there was in there was integrity and there was um love and nurturing um and again that goes back to my grandparents that are then my mom you know obviously did what she had to do right that's a tough fucking deal you know what mm. she what she had to do again there's acceptance around that jake you know around yeah around um holding resentment to mum for so long because i thought you know there was a lot of that narrative and anger in that young boy that mm. why didn't you fucking tell me yeah. you know what are you doing and and mum and i have gone on a hell of a healing journey and brought it back but i had to grow i had to go on my journey to actually as we do you know to mature and realize hey that was a fucking hard decision because ironically i've had to sit down and tell my kids a truth at 10 and i'll tell you what that is in a minute and, and I actually went back into that. And in that moment, I was like, fuck, that must have been tough, you know, um, mm. telling your, your 10-year-old child the truth. So I'll fast forward a little bit. Um, you know, there was obviously got to know certain members of my family and went on this journey. I was connected with family. So there's a there's quite a, an interesting time period between 10 um, and, and 16. So 16. So these are my big three, 10-year-old boys, number one. Um, then 16-year-old um boy he's still a boy at this stage going in doing the high school thing public high school still again navigating housing teenage good uh being the eldest on mum's line um but the youngest on dad's you know i've got an older sister um on dad's line and we've we've connected you know from from that time but um i think um the most important thing about the 16 year old is uh i went to bed one foggy morning and out then then i was living in bathurst i was living in central west so when mum divorced dad she 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 went out and, and re married and you know relocated as, as you do um so i spent a lot of time out there in bathurst in, in the central west and uh and that's where we got a phone call um and it was one morning and uh, i remember it was a really f- it, was, it was a foggy morning it was the first fog we had bathurst is notorious for fog there's a river that runs through it's called the macquarie river or womble and it runs through and, and it's notorious for it but i remember the foggy morning and um, that night I had a dream, I had this really gnarly dream and it freaked me the fuck out, you know, I was like, oh, you know, this is pretty gnarly, it was this man coming to me that looked pretty similar to me and um, he had blood all through here, you know, pretty gory. Um, next morning I got the truth that my dad had committed suicide. Um, so that moment there's um, an all, all um, nurturing to the listeners out there because of what i've just said is pretty pretty gnarly so look after yourselves and make sure you're speaking to someone and take care because whether or not obviously you're struggling with mental health or you know in that in that space is a question that i've commonly asked myself to Mm. where my dad is and i am a i'm a son of a suicided man again there's acceptance around that brother you know a lot of time on how to how to deal with that i've been on a i've been on a gnarly fucking healing journey you know um Mm. and uh so that's the one that really, where you were touching before, Kenny was. The it could have been fucking either way, at that yeah. point. You know what I mean? But here he is, identity. You know, in a in a what an, was an identity crisis sort of thing, mm. which got neutralized and set on the journey, and um, had my grandfather there to you know teach me culture. And like you guys now know, I'm, I'm quite quite sound in that space now a lot more than. And with all due respect, I'm a lot more culturally sound than. 
you know, an Aboriginal person that's grown up, you know, the whole way knowing who they were. So yeah. um, that's a really odd place to be too, you know, um, really so culturally sound. But that's part of the journey and why I bring a unique um, formula to my work, you know, um, because I'm a, fuck, I'm a byproduct of it and, I, and I've lived the two worlds and not only have I lived the two worlds, I've had to go on what is really two different journeys, you know, to bring yeah. into one. And, and so, you know, uh, through the suicide of my father, I really started to connect more with my family. Um, they brought me in and, and I suppose the loss of dad um, brought me into the family. So I learned some pretty fucking hard and quick lessons and, yeah. you know, learnt my, my mum's in our way, like I said, my, our aunties are our mums. So I have all these mums and my dad's siblings and and, her, and his brothers and my grandparents again. So so you come into this whole ecosystem of family where, where you learn. But yes, it, it always has been a, a bit of a catch up. So I, I look at it as, as the irony of this is an irony for you is that the average life expectancy, like I said this morning, for an Indigenous man is 10.9 years and I found my indigeneity and my Aboriginality at 10. So I'm sort of running in that handicap <laughs> yeah, margin, yeah. you know, <laughs> so it's weird. Like I always think about that and might be a bit warped, but that's how I think about it sometimes. And um, I, don't, I don't differ from that, hey. I, mm. I've had to sort of really... Um, and then like I said to you guys before, identity, um, Aboriginal people being disconnected from family culture community you know through stolen generational impacts is the main contributor to that as we know we, we look at our history and that's what's happened um and byproducts of transgenerational trauma and i've, I've had my fair share but there's another one so a bit like tim from daniel's direct wait there's more um <laughs> uh is he still alive mate i don't know, I don't know. let's I google hope, that. I hope let's so. find out I hope tim, so. how is tim um but um we uh, we then fast forward, I suppose, from a journey. I was on a journey. I, I went through a really special ceremony that my grandfather led and he hadn't done it for a long time. And what I can say, a lot of that's sacred um, and important, but it's a, it's a form of rite of passage that I'll speak about. It happens all across the country and my grandfather still leads those important movements and ceremonies and I was a part of that. Um, I was a part of that uh, reinvigoration of that ceremony after him taking what was... I think it was close to 10 years or four, no, 14 years since he'd done one before. Anyway, he got back into it and continues to do that now. I now help help with those and lead in that space. And um, he, um, I, my grandfather released a book uh, and his book is called My People's Dreaming. It talks about what I spoke to you guys, what you've seen before, uh, you and creation story down on the, on the south coast of New South Wales. Um and that book uh, depicts his gifts that he was given by his five masters, his old people that, that taught him. And um, anyway, in 2008, he released the book. And I was, uh, at back then, I was a plasterer by trade. So I'm, I'm a jeep rocker. Um, uh, and I did that for 10 years. I um, excelled and did to the best of my ability what, what I could in that, in that industry. I had bought a house. I had, um, you know, two kids. I was leave, living what many people would think the Australian, is the inverted commas, uh, Australian dream, you know, yeah. and, and, and on that journey. But fuck, I was depressed, you know. I, I was in this hole for about three years, um, two years, yeah, till the birth, birth of my daughter. Um, I was still really struggling and I suppose I, I was still there and, I, and like any father loved and provided and, when, but but the birth of my daughter in um, 2010 really just hit something within me, uh, it, and I left me from from that deep depressive state of just hating. You know, we've all been there probably hating what we do and, and yep. not being happy. And um, anyway, I sort of knew something deeper was going on. But at that time also, I I really started to. I remember ring. I remember the conversation with my grandfather because he'd be continually saying, "When are you coming with me?" Little prods and people would ask me about his book and. He's got his followers, you know, and his network. So every time I was in the space with him, I'd get all these sort of questions. And I'm the oldest living grandson now, you know, brother Delhi, who, who my, my big cousin brother, he passed over, but it leaves me now as the the, the oldest living grandson. That's a, that's a big deal, you know, mm -hmm. in, in family. And so there was a there was a sense of expectation, but I knew I knew my grandfather was sort of just trying to nurture him. But anyway, it got it got to a stage where he really sort of drew the line in the sand for me. And I remember ringing him and saying, "Hey, I want to learn." He goes, all right, you know, and he sort of knew it was coming, but something in his mode changed the day I asked. <laughs> so it was like, all right, I'll fucking teach you now. All right, yeah. that's what you want. I'm, I'm going to teach you and take you on this journey. So um, the 
the publishing of the book and me attempting to read the book was so crucial um, because the book's actually dedicated to my dad. So I found it quite confronting. You know, as soon as I flipped the fucking book open, I was wow. like, shit, you know, and I'd read, read, read. None of the words were making sense. Nothing, you know. could sort of see that and I was fucking just struggling big time. And um, anyway, I remember throwing the book several occasions in frustration. Don't tell him that. No, he knows now. <laughs> but uh, I did put my foot in it, if you hear me out. And uh, he uh, uh, went through that, 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 that really important time and ceremony in March 2011. And uh, so after that, um, I was awoken. But at that particular, t- particular camp, I will share this, um, I presented towards six old men and around 30 men from all different indigenous, indigenous communities. Um, and I fucking cried for two and a half hours. I fell literally on the ground. It was my turn because it was an intro, and I just cried and cried and cried, and I couldn't stop. It was that moment where I just couldn't stop. Wow. It was so overwhelming. Um, you know, the cheeks were hurting, you know, cause you, and you were frustrated yourself because you didn't want to cry anymore. And, yeah. uh, and, I, and, I, and then, you know, it's one of the most uh, amazing moments of my life, as, as fucking powerful as, uh, and painful as it was. It was one of the most amazing moments in my life because I knew then that I transisted. I made that transition. Um, yeah. And the old people, the six old men that were there, they got me up off the ground literally and I had to look at them. And, and this is pretty dawning, man. Like you got six Aboriginal elders, like old men, powerful old men, you know, sort of standing before you and um, they said, son, Remember this, if you're going to take something away from this journey, you're not a real man unless you shed tears. Grandmother Moon is there to help us with our emotions and we must release that at, at the time, you know, of need. And you were well overdue, you know, the yeah. old followers said to me. And uh, and um, after that, guess what I did? I read the book, you know. Um, yeah. So that journey for me uh, to that point um, – was a big big stepping stone obviously i was unearthed with this whole new awakening of um awakening of who i truly was and what i was capable or or what i could do Mm. um and again that's really fucking hard to put into words what that what that is it's a whole series of feelings in the mind in the heart in the spirit and you just start you know it, it is it really is a rebirthing and a reincarnation of yourself and Probably people would probably resonate that maybe if they have drug and alcohol issues and they maybe come through. I'm just trying to find some context, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, going and, and, and helping themselves and being better versions of themselves and whatever that is through whatever spiritual con- connectivity or whatever you're doing, you know, going deeper and doing the work on yourself, as, as it said, so fucking important, you know, no matter who we are, uh, we've got to do the work on ourselves and um, in mind, body and spirit. So... 2013 is my third big moment and it's probably the, the real crucial moment of, you know, like I said, I, I was a few years into being you know, a, a, uh, a tyrant. Uh, I wanted everybody to share in what I had. Um, I, was a fuck, I was a fucking beast. You know? <laughs> I was a beast and, and I was just on this journey of just boom, 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 you know, culture, culture, culture. This is what I got. Have some of it, even in just in my own presence. This is sounds fucking gnarly but i was actually at times a bit overwhelmed at my own presence you know without that i don't know if that sounds egocentric or not but that's how it was you know and um so what it was is, is 2013 was my big humbling where i really looked at the feminine um and it was the attempted murder of my sister so she's my one and only sister and at the hands of an indigenous man on the community was attacked with a hammer and uh she lost her left eye and has 13 steel plates in her face. Um, thank the creator that my sister is still alive. Um, she's still with us. She's a proud grandmother now. And she was actually on the ABC 730 report back in 2016, I think it was. And she came and lived with me for about six months when that story broke. And I know that you know, and my sister and I, um, you know, like many siblings, we, even though we didn't grow up together, it's one of the most amazing bonds that you could ever have is when you ask her today when she was uh, had a head about this big and in a you know, tube sticking everywhere and if anyone's been in an ICU, it's a, it's a fucking gnarly place to be. And, yeah. Um, I was there and, and I remember doing my, my healing work because we've been given some healing attributes. You know, we don't put that on billboards or anything, but we were invited and the, the ICU nurse let us do what we needed to do and... I had the headband that I've got on my uh, my wrist and um, 
my sister awoke from that coma, obviously, and then had seven operations. Um, the first uh, prognosis was she was going to be in there for nine and a half weeks. It was one of the most intense surgical procedures a surgeon had ever done, and I was obviously it was myself and her other sister on her mum's line, and they said, oh, you know, as they do, they spill the complications and what can happen, and you know, whatever we don't know. She got brain damage, yada yada. So, um, obviously, that was pretty gnarly. It was about. Yeah, it was just under a fortnight in Canberra Hospital and um, she, uh, my, my big sister walked out of that hospital in two and a half weeks. Take, wow. it, or, take it or leave yeah. it. Um, she's my fucking hero. Um, makes me a bit emotional thinking about it now. She's my hero. And my, my Numang is my older sister and, and she's my hero. And what she's had to endure and continually, continually has to endure um, at the hands, ironically, of an Indigenous man and... At that point in my career, I was actually the coordinator and facilitator of a family violence program. So I had to some fucking how, some way, mm. <laughs> figure out how I was going to have what happened to my sister and have perpetrators of that and try to work with them. The real quick part of that story is I resigned from that job about two months after, which everybody could probably appreciate. There's way too many triggers going on. But ironically now, I work back with men of all different, uh, obviously with different issues, including family violence issues uh, in 2020 because I had to do a lot of growing, accepting, went through the whole justice period, eyed off the, the perpetrator of that. I can still see him right now. Um, many things I would have loved to have done to him and jumped the deck, And you know, but what would, what would that have done? Um, he got, I think he got 12 years, um, so he's still incarcerated at the moment, but... Um, the inevitability he's going to be released back in community again so that's that's a that's a big deal you know and uh yeah. so i had to find a, yeah. a shitload of um uh patience and tolerance and respect and and that's the thing but i want to be very clear and i want to shout out you know and, and be very empathetic towards the the men that also um you know are victims of family of violence as well the violence period is fucked you know um we've got to try we've got to stop it um and that's why we've got to look at our own wellness and our own reactivity and, and how do we how do we look at that and um, that's one of my big moments brothers and that's what puts me in the place I do and that's what drives me especially with being back to warrior it's um if you ever jump into the space and dialogue you know I, I really try to be soft and um, nurturing and nurture men through that so I've had to find a lot of acceptance can you can you talk us through what the bring back the warrior <coughs> program is and and what its goal and objectives is and like why it started you know we're three Men, you know, not like, um, who you know, all adults, all fathers, um, and I think you know we we're talking on the way down here, Dwayne, that you know about the the obvious hole and, and problems and issues of masculinity that are currently being raised culturally. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk around toxic masculinity and the problems of, and you know, I think or I, I said to you on the way down that my kind of my kind of take on it is that. W- we're we're throwing <laughs> we're very much throwing the baby out with the bathwater here that 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 we're rather than investigating and exploring the possibilities of masculinity and drawing out the best of it and nurturing it and and rediscovering it and celebrating the parts the strength and and the and the power the mm. that both feminine f- that women and men have and 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 doubling down on the on the beauty that lives within all of us as humans we have this real culture of negativity and just slaying everything that has anything to do with masculinity. And I think one of the most refreshing things when I was looking into who you were and uh, introduced by Mike Benny, our mutual friend, and looking through and this thing popped out, this Bring Back the Warrior program, and my I, I only know what about it from, from the website, which is N- Ngara? Yeah, Naran, AboriginalCulture.com. Yep. Cool, sorry. Yep. I'll put it on the link in the yep. podcast and stuff as well. But... Um, that's all I know about it, but I was just I was taken with 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 the language around fostering a positive sense of masculinity in a time where masculinity is off the table of discussion. Yeah, and uh, yeah, t- tell us about it and what, like the goals and and like yeah everything about it and, and your your take on what masculinity is and what should be and what it looks like. Yeah, I love to. It's a, it's a great concept and it was a good discussion and it's one I value that that yarn and. I suppose after my, my deep story, you asked. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful uh, we, and we, hard story, but yeah. thank you for sharing it as yeah, well. Yeah, it's um it's an important uh, part of where I sit and, and why I care so much. Mm. And 
Um, I made a promise, you know, at my dad's uh, graveside that I would improve the lives of Indigenous men. So even after my sister's situation uh, and my, my obviously my 10-year-old ten, ten firework moment, that was where obviously we, in running, and I mean you like a bit of running, we'll talk about that later maybe, but um, uh, you're always asking yourself your why, you know, why are you doing this? Um, and it's <laughs> yeah, especially fucking 5Ks <laughs> into a 10K <laughs> run. For, for me, I'm, fuck, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? It yeah. sucks. Yeah. When you forget yeah. how to run, yeah. your legs start yeah. going, yeah. 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 <laughs> forget yeah. how to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, the fucking head noise that you have, yeah, eh? bro. It's, it's, it's chronic, so... Um, yeah, no, but what what is your why? And I suppose that that really I go back to that promise that I made my dad, you know, um, that uh, I would I would go on with that, and that's what inspired me to bring bring back the warrior into a concept which looks hopefully in the future, very short, soon future. I guess that's pretty bad language. Um, the very sh- uh, soon future that doesn't make sense either. <laughs> <laughs> near uh, future, uh, near future. Thank you, Kenny. I'm a bit fried. Um, it's been a long uh, fucking day. <laughs> it's been a big day. Uh, yeah, but uh, in the near future, uh, we'll have that out. But I think the the crux of uh, yeah, what do I what do I want to do with masculinity? Um, I want to be able to get men to connect and learn to say, "I love you," you know, "I love you" and "I care for you." Are you all right? And then let's have some fucking banner and bag each other out because the roost has got beat <coughs> last week, you know, or yeah. or let let's try and find a balance where. We can, and I'm not. Say, I'm not going as far to say that that men aren't practicing that, but I think there's a difference between, you know, embracing it and, and practicing it, um, and nurturing it and fostering it. Um, and I suppose it sort of goes back to my my other key message on, and, and I'm not sure, quite sure of the wording around this, but trying to find normalization in spirituality. You know, um, that you don't have to be full woo woo to to connect spiritually. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can be an average Joe, you know, uh, man or woman that you know, goes and, and uh, works in a, an office job nine to five, you know, and goes and have a few beers and still can practice spirituality. So I suppose it's a, it's a similar essence to, to what I, what I want to, you know, push out around that. But I suppose, yeah, we, we, we concentrate on, um, obviously we have a cultural um, space, which you guys felt me create earlier, yeah. um, which is quite powerful. Um, I, I'm a, I'm a, I love, that's why I loved, I watched you, you know, do your little candles and, you know, even though they're a bit odd, and I'm, my OCD wants me to turn that one around, and, <laughs> uh, but uh, but, I'll ta- but I'll take it right. Um, the, I suppose the the message there is is uh, yeah, creating that space to do it, and that's that's the fucking key. Is we got to have a space to be able to do healing and, and wellness and and have that conversation, and we've got to try to again. I got that saying: buy into the process, um, come into this process, and let's see what magic we can do. But it's the individual. It's back to the self. It's back to the person. We can give you, like I say to the men, you know, um, I'm giving you a, a suite of or, a, or, a, or a, a shelf of different tools or, you know, a tool belt um, to give you the tools to be able to help yourself because at the end of the day, it's got to fall back on you, you know. You've got to be able to, to, to be, I suppose, have enough capacity to, to, to do that. And as we know, men, men um, you know, shut up, boy, you know, don't cry. It's one of the worst things you could say. You know, yeah. Um, and and I don't know, and I don't think our fathers or the generations, you know, that that they knew, they probably thought, you know, well, maybe they were thinking that was the right thing to do because they were taught by their fathers. And we go back again to that to- toxic masculinity. You know, I think it's the masculinity that uh, is indoctrinated, um, and there's parts of it, um, like you, like me, and you were yarning about Jake. Is there's parts of that that we need. We need that. We need that um, aggression. We need that protection. Um, but we also need to be the listener, the nurturer, the provider, you know, and, and care for our loved ones too. So, um, uh, yeah, stereotypes have lent, lent, um, I suppose, views that that um, yeah, like you said, I think we've either got to be labelled one way or the other. We, we, sometimes it's hard to be in between, and in between's okay as well. Um, yeah, the the whole um, masculinity, um, you know, concept. Um, again, it goes back to what we're what we're born into, you know, what we're trying to navigate. And a lot of us miss out. A lot of us miss out because you know traditionally we're supposed to be, you know, and genetically, um, well, from from traditional perspective, from indigenous people where I come from, um, you're, you're nurtured by that mum, you know, and we've got all that loving and, and holding and 
even as a young boy, um, there's a story in, in our dreaming that, that that's right there. It's it's about a younger younger son and an older son, and and the journey that they both take from their mother. Where mm-hmm. the moral to the story is is that one son's here and one son's out there, but they're both connected back to their mum, no matter how big they are. You know, yeah. um, so respectful women, um, all those different things that we're probably denied. Again, I spoke about my my healing journey with my mum and, and how that's sort of taken some ebbs and flows and whatever, but as I've grown and learnt um, those lessons, um, we bring it back. But, yeah, I think um, every every man um, that uh, no matter his sexuality, um, you know, his preference in politics, <laughs> whatever, you know, everyone's got a right to masculinity and how we embrace it mm. and... Um, I, I don't know about you guys, but I think there's a lot of men that are actually unconscious to their masculinity and they just lean into something that is artificial and then all of a sudden yeah, agreed. they get to that point where they're fucking in dire straits, where they're divorced, you know. Be like me, I was on that Australian dream, so to speak, and fuck, I call it the tradies curse, you know. You go around a smoko room back in my day and every second tradie was fucking divorced and whinging about all the, you know, I'm here working my ass off, but my, my, my wife's you know, taking all the money, all that sort of yada, yada, yeah, yada. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you might have been an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> you know, look at where you're doing, you know, all these sorts of things. But And I, and I, and I don't want to be unfair <laughs> to the construction industry, but that's my experience and maybe it has changed and I hope that that, that is the case. Um, but those are those common, I've heard that said in... in uh, I think it's not just the construction the industry. It's, it's yeah. just, to be honest, it's, you know, I think it's a... We have, a, I would say, it's fair to say we have a crisis of masculinity currently yep. in 2020 across the globe. Well, in Western culture, um, Western societies, you know, um, I think it's it's pretty clear. And from from where I sit, I it frustrates me when people talk about toxic masculinity because I take it so personally. Because I'm like, well, you tell me what's toxic about my two, my three year old son. He's a little boy and he loves cars and trucks and fucking spins a fucking wheel on an overturned tricycle like a fucking madman and he's just a boy <laughs> and he runs around like a boy and he just holds his dick like a boy and he's just yeah. a little boy. Yeah. I'm like, you tell me what's wrong with him. I tell you the only thing that's going to be wrong with him is what I do to him yeah. and what my wife does to him or what society does to him because inherently and in, in, innately in him, his masculinity is not the problem. It's what we model into him and what we give him as a fucking mm. structure within which to grow. And he will grow. And he will grow and inhabit a space regardless of what I do. He will grow and inhabit a space that I create for him. And I find that there are arguments when people are just so flippant around co- toxic masculinity without offering some, some pathway to a solution and a resolution that allows for this issue to be properly resolved – it's just a fucking, it's just muckraking and time wasting. Like, tell me how to fucking solve the problem of my son. Like, not the problem of us. Tell me how to solve the problem of me so that my son doesn't have to inherent, in, well, inherit the thing, these like issues. You know, you know the problem, and I think it's, it's, it can be a multi-generational thing. I don't know, like, when my father and his friends and my sort of group of friends and their fathers, you know, when we were growing up, we were definitely more in touch with our emotions like hugging our friends and shit yeah. like, so my, well, they would never do i feel like now my dad's about 70 and you can you know they soften like yeah. men soften and it's like you could see like there's no it's not a, by any means a, a jealousy but it's like a, a really understanding of fuck if i should like i wish i'd known about this yeah. sooner yeah. like i wish i'd been able to talk to you know because w- w- i would probably break through in relationships are probably like you know late mid late 20s and it was, you know, never, I can't remember them really saying that they loved you or anything like that. It's, I tell my son every day. Like, it's, yeah. so you're already creating that space. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Like it's, it's, you know, I, it's, I think it's just that thing of the people just didn't get told. Like, you know it's, what I mean? It was a real hard and, yeah. like, when Scotland's similar, like, you don't fucking go to the doctor when you're sick. You don't fucking do yeah. shit. You don't fucking speak up when you don't feel right. Yeah. Like, you can't imagine, yeah. can't imagine the levels of depression going on. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, my, my daughter goes the other day because, you know, it's just been the are you okay? And she was like, is it still are you okay day? And I was like, every day is are you okay day. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's just asking yeah. your friends if they're okay. It's yeah. like, that's what it is. It's like they advertise it just to keep the message flowing. Mm. But every single day is are you okay day. Yeah, She's love like, it. Okay. Yeah, it's an important message. And you're right. I, I love you, son. I said it last night when he got elected for the SRC for next year. You know, like, But you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's those little, like we was talking about, it's those little moments that... Uh, and I know I just had this like plenty of warp thoughts, but yeah, you know, I, I was <laughs> share them. Um, yeah. But I'm sitting in an next year and all doing a podcast. <laughs> so it's probably help. But uh, on that note, look what was on look what was on our plates. 
you know, how dry was a two two meat and veg, you know, that's yeah. a veg and meat, sorry, whatever way. Um, but, you know, look, look at the generation is what I'm trying to lean into there and what, what it was. And that's, again, it's not passing judgment. It's just the way it was. And whether that's a culmination of not condoning or condoning or just accepting what, what was, but but you're right. I, I see that in um, you know, I see that in my father in law. You know, I see that in people that I know that they just and my mum even. You know, that they're softer as they as they grow. Um, not saying everyone's you know, hardcore, but I suppose that comes with maturity. And but but if we can get that, like you said, it's that start from that early age where we where we know. Well, what's dad doing? Or well, dad's telling me that that I love him. And you know, I, I reckon there'd be a lot of a lot of men our age that. Um, Never had that said, right? So it's a, it's a good it's a good yeah. message. Not really often good message. at all, like yeah. Mm. And I've I've, I've can't, it's, I'm gonna be remiss of us to to not mention the the you know I feel like on from the being back the warrior program and the work yep. you must be you do with Indigenous men is yep. you've got the double <laughs> the double issue of the fact that there's been a there, there's been a historical divorcing of of what what masculinity can be. Mm. Um, uh, in our wider societal com- conversation, we are right now as a multicultural, yeah. like, in, like integrated yeah. Right, like, uh, yeah. um, society. But then you've also got the rela- the reality of the fact that um, the, in the indigenous world, there's been a, a, a removal of culture and a yeah. and a and a. Well, it's not just a. It's an alienation from everything that that has been so core. That's right, and. So there's a double issue going hand in hand. One, you know, like that that isolation from both masculinity and and that's happening wider. And then, very much, you know, your stories, the, the way that we got we are guided that framework we're talking about, that structure about how to behave, like the re- the role of of mothers and women and and, and, and sisters and aunties in in community, along with your uncles and yeah. your brothers and and fathers. Like that's there must be a, a, a it must be a far more complex conversation to have. Yeah, where. What yeah. what are your insights on this currently? Yeah, it's um, it's how do you it, approach it? Yeah, well, it's the ultimate, and it's just getting men to undo a lot of unlearning because they've adopted mm. a lot of those behaviours in their own in their own right as a journey. So, um, again, I'm going to be really bold in my statement to say that there's a lot of that white man's poison in a lot of our black men that have got has, has got to be uh, taken out, but also re <laughs> also encouraged that. That was where, you know, this place and not everybody's to blame for that. Um, but here's your culture. Um, we're, we're trying to give it to you, but they don't know how to do it. So you've got to really get get men back to really preschool, you know, getting in and, and doing a little bit of what we did this morning, you know, getting, getting them into a space where, you know what, it's not saying that every Indigenous man that I work with has no affiliation with culture. Um, it's, a real, it's a real mixed bag of... Um, disconnect um you know the community or the history of the town um just denying like like you spoke like you spoke to um so i suppose it's really stripping back all those layers and and actually starting from from the beginning again and that probably to put that in perspective that's not just one session that's that's why Mm. i have such a fucking chronic time when you know, government will drip feed us some chicken feed you know like and give (laughs) us these little little dribs and drabs of um, chicken feed and and you know resources to maybe you know do something quarterly or that's in my case anyway um, you know like funding funding grants aren't aren't easy to to do I suppose from a time perspective and energy they take a lot of energy you know um, some orgs some orgs are really good at that and they've got you know resources and people to do it but I suppose you know it's sort of like oh uh, the the indigenous men and, and men in general, but speaking to indigenous men, ha, have lost their role, and that's what bring back the warrior is. It's bringing back the warrior, the true warrior again, and and starting back from basics and looking at the the six fundamentals that I look at. Um, that sort of divvies up into twelve, and um, you know, good health and well being, um, role and community, identity. You know, it's all there, and that's what the podcast is actually. Every, every time I take on a, a solo episode, so for our podcast we do one guest and then I do a solo episode taking on a pillar of the work and I, and I give mm. a slash check in and an um, and a, and a interpretation of what, what I mean by that. All right? So that's the journey so far in season one anyway until I've still got a little bit of go, uh, time with that. But uh, um, the point that I'm trying to get to, it's, it's just helping men first and foremost plug into that ancient Wi-Fi 
know, that I talk about. It's the ancient fire, fire, fire. It's the it's the ancientness of what the old people have created us, and um, what we're in a lot of cases can be unconscious to as well as. And uh, men, men in our communities um, either really embrace you know culture because they've been taught by their fathers, uncles, grandfathers, or, or aunties and mums, um, whatever way. Um, they've got to have that conduit and that, that portal to do it, but there is so many, um, both, b- both brothers and sisters, that, that have missed that opportunity. And that's why I go back to my, the start of my, my journey that you asked before. I'm so blessed to have the unique story. Um, not many people have, have a, sim- it's a similar stories, but every story is unique, but mine, mine's quite unique, you know, with, with what I've, number one, had to, had to endure. Yeah. Um, and, and where I've come to and what I do today is quite, um, mind-boggling at times but I stick to my truth and my purpose and sometimes um, that involves uh, you know really obviously like anyone else making tough decisions um, and when you need to make a, a tough decision with your community that's always a tough one too because <coughs> of what what you see you are this you know a part of this um, you know race of people that have you know copped and endured all this and um all this, uh, you know, all the all the all the atroc- atrocities that have happened in our, in our history, and um, to see a man though, there's nothing more inspiring for me. Is there's a couple of points um, than a man doing the work on himself. Yeah, uh, amen. And I, I can see smile. I, I see it, and it makes me feel good in my heart. And I don't mind if that's just I can sit and down, and because the work that I was doing before my sister's um, attack. And I continued to do in a different role and a bit of a different way, but was um you know work with Aboriginal men weekly on you know behavioural change and the circle work that I took you guys through this morning is embedded in that, and they still continue from nine years ago. They still use that that circle work, and um and I, and I, it was really nice moment where uh you know Falls Creek uh, where yeah old Dunnett used to be, and um uh, that's where I used to run the program, and I popped in a few months ago. Bef- oh, pre-COVID, it's probably a bit longer, but earlier in the year, and um, I sat in, and I was unannounced, and I just popped up, and and I seen it, you know, I seen what I started um, eight or nine years ago, and I actually sat in that circle. I just came in and sat myself in, and that's a fuck, that's fucking powerful, you know. Seeing yeah. those men embrace that, and you know, not not looking for kudos, just wanting to fucking go. Oh, I want to be in here and, and feel it, and and all those men and the pride and. You know, that might only be for fucking three hours a week. Yep. But it's something. You know? It's huge. Mm. It'll change a community. Mm. You know, but people who are willing to, I think it's, you know, it's people who are willing to face what's in front of them, the, the hard facts of reality. Like, look at it, look at yourself in the cold light of day and, 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 and learn to not, not, it's not around accepting it. In the sense of allowing it to continue, but it's accepting it and going. Well, I need. I accept this needs to change. I, I accept this for what it is, and you look, I look at it honestly, and it's not good. And I need to work on this. You're right. It's it's a beautiful thing to think of groups of men. You know, no matter what their background, sitting together and 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 like you said, doing the work. It's yeah. fucking fabulous. And I'm and I'm and that point exactly in that moment if you were to share with me something like you nurtured me through and i felt safe to say my 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 story for fuck's sake to whatever the millions of people this gets beamed out to um <laughs> but uh and billions after this one uh taking this we got to say something fucking crazy so yeah, we can go viral yeah, bro yeah, yeah. so um uh, I'm sure it's riveting conversation and listening. I'm sure, um, but um, <laughs> but uh, I think to the point, uh, it's it, yeah, it's it's such an important part for me to say, yeah, thanks, brother. You know, thanks yeah. for sharing that. That's a beautiful moment. Just those little—they're not little. They're big words that can be said very subtly. Where we're we're helping each other be safe, you know, and uh, uh, you know, like you know, look, take this environment. Oh, have another beer, bro. You know. It'll be should be right. No, it's not fucking right. Have a beer, but let's talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that 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 yarn. Even that simple change up. You know, mm-hmm. um, there's little changes we can make within our masculinity that that don't. You know, we don't have to go to full fucking therapy. I love therapy. I'm, I'm a, you know, that's the stuff that I love in a different way. But it's not for everybody. But there's certain ways and elements of that mm-hmm. that we can bring into our our life to support. You know, and, and watch yeah. our brother. And if he gets to a point, we then have accountability to say. 
uh, for what it's worth or whether you get get fucked and don't talk to me again, you know, um, you, you sure you don't want to speak to someone, brother? You know, that that's where our roles are, yeah. you know, for each other. Or it might be the first in a chain of events that leads to sure. change. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's not even, I think that people that entrenched in that system of masculinity, like, that sort of tradies cycle that you spoke of, like, it's, yeah, I'm sure it's not a. You don't bring it up and they go, "Oh fuck, you're right." I've been waiting for someone to talk to me. <laughs> like, I'm sure there's a lot of fucking chipping away. Yeah, or like, just come back in two months time and be like, you know, you said that thing. You know, through the silence, they might just sort of might get somewhere. Mm. It's it's a long time. I'd imagine that going sit in that circle. You know, one of the great things it did was inspire and motivate you to keep doing what you're doing, which is, you know, it's it gets you know it might be three hours a week for them, but it's got another ten years, twenty years out of you to keep doing mm. what you're doing to sort of, you know, start it start it in another part of the the country or whatever right. whatever it means, like whatever right. it means, just to sort of keep growing that positive yeah. cycle. Yeah. It's really amazing. Um, I, w- I also wanted to touch on something from the conversation earlier when you went to your presentation. Um, you spoke of. Because it was a very confronting thing with the with your partner Andrew, the 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 nerdy, oh, yeah. yeah, the nerdy guy. Yeah. The, 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 the idea of like um, yeah, fucking he'll, geek. He'll, he'll probably plug into this. <laughs> but, oh, but we just no, doubled it. Was it, your, this isn't it, was to- it was your topic that you proposed. <laughs> but that yeah, like yeah. the uh, like the all of a sudden like so the next there's a you know indigenous party running for government and yeah, getting yeah. into government and yeah. it's like and that sort of confronting idea and what it's a way to sort of really very quickly make someone. You know, maybe shit themselves or like get a get a real understanding yeah. of what it's like to be on the other side of the the fence. Mm, like, mm. There's, like, there's a TV. I've not watched it in depth. There's a TV show called like Castle in the Sky or something, which is basically starts starts in the sixties if Germany and Japan had won oh, yeah. World War Two. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So it's like America's base. The western of America is run by Japan, yep. and the east is run by. Yep. Uh, like Nazi Germany because yeah. they st- they're still a thing, obviously. Isn't it, uh, California's Japanese? This, yeah, yeah. Right. Their capital is like San Francisco or something, and it's like and the the New Rocky Tokyo. Mountains is like the where the like the the, the neutral Cold War <laughs> is, so, and so they right. don't piss piss each other off. Yeah, and right. then, and as he raised the topic of like much more um, practical or like present examples like South Africa on that sort of quick changeover. I mean, I don't know if you just wanted to touch on that in terms of. You know, is there like the, f- the main points that you know white Australia would just Im- immediately go, oh fuck, like or like like the rug's been pulled from their feet, or like what's that that real, you know, it's the whole point of it was to have a deeper understanding of what it's like to be yeah. on that other side. Yeah, hundred percent, and and that's a, what Kenny's speaking to is a scenario that that is a question on uh, one of the episodes of, of uh, Secret Man's Business with my good friend Andrew. Hello to Andrew if you're watching. Um, hi, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. You're not a geek. No, go on. <laughs> uh, Massive geek. <laughs> kept saying it. Kept yeah. saying it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I think, yeah, no, 100%. Look, it, it, it's a scenario that we teased out and it was something that um, I've been thinking about for a while and it's a scenario that could be adapted into many ways and there's a, obviously a bit of... Um, uh, you know, there's obviously a fairly sort of light-hearted and uh, what would probably seem unrealistic, but but basically the the crux of it is if everything was flipped around and we had an Aboriginal president, you know, and we 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 would then have power and we'd have wealth, and all of a sudden um, we would go, you know, into into back to the future, and then it would all change. So we currently wake up at nine o'clock the next morning, and and everything's fucking changed, and we're like, okay, what happens now? Um, yeah. You know, Andrew actually does say it's quite quite humorous. I think it's either that episode or the, the part two to that where he um, we have a bit of a joke how, you know, they'd be all lined up in the docks at Port Botany and putting all the all the white fellas on the on the on the ships, you know, <laughs> and sending them back. Send them and, home. Yeah, yeah, you know. And we played around with all these fucking gnarly scenarios and um had a bit of fun with it, but but obviously with a serious tone as well because we it'd rock our fucking world. You know, it'd rock what do you what world. do you think the first policy change would be, or what would you like to see in that scenario? Yeah, look, I think it's it's definitely our, our democracy and the way we do things um, to bring in more of that that uh, I suppose the old way of doing things. You know, bringing in that equality, bringing in circles, talking you know, councils, and letting you know uh, Aboriginal people speak uh, on behalf of. Of, of their community, you know, or, or what they need in their way. Obviously, dispersing of um, infrastructure funds, resources. Um, yeah, we we turn it 
turn this country on its head, literally. Um, but I think that <laughs> that's the main sort of um, point is, I suppose, like like you were saying, Kenny, that, that, it, that it hits people and go, oh, fuck, you know, I'd be scared, you know, what happened, like Andrew says in it, what, what happens to me, you know, poor me, or mm-hmm. what happens to my house, or, you know, or is, is it going to be a civil war and, and all these things. And, and look, I, I've, I, for what it's worth, uh, you know, Nelson Mandela's... Um, Long, long walk to freedom is one of the most remarkable fucking books I've ever ever read. Well, it was audio book, but you know, it's, it's f- anyone that wants to read something or listen, that that's a phenomenal book. And um, I suppose that's where that comparative, you know, to yeah. to, to Africa. Um, I suppose we have a different history, but there's a lot of policies. Like even the Queensland government adopted the apartheid policy that was part of their 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 framework around what they were doing. They they got it directly from from South Africa right. through um, Bioki Peterson or whatever. So yeah, um, that's that's gnarly in that state. So that that gives the, the state of Queensland and New South Wales a slightly not, not that anyone's advantage or disadvantage or rot. You know, that was what wrong, but you know, there's, there's different levels, and that's what we spoke about and teased mm. out again before as well. So the histories of states, territories, communities. Um, yeah, it'd be pretty. It'd be pretty fucking gnarly. We, we'd have to sort of get back to, to basics, and then you know, playing with the scenario. Would we? You know, are we in a mindset where we're going to actually, you know, change a lot of behaviours and attitudes to say, okay, well, this is how we do it. But um, you spoke to it before. I, I believe strongly that, you know, this is multicultural um, Australia. Um, multicultural Aboriginal Australia has been here for millennia. Um, I think that the multiculturalism in this country would would fit in perfectly with with that concept of inclusiveness and still enough separation and and detachment. There's a different difference between disconnect and detach. Um, yeah. But still come together at the Rocky Mountains, you know, or wherever these meeting points were, and we could meet in the middle and chat it out. Um, rather than multi, you know, one of the most powerful sessions I've ever done was a youth session uh, over on the North Shore here in Sydney a few years ago, and. Um, it was a uh, refugee youth program um, in correlation with um, with uh, the, the youth uh, uh, migration programs here in Sydney and um, a multicultural youth organisation and um, one of the most fucking powerful moments sitting there doing this similar session and content to what I did with you guys with Afghani, Iranian, Syrian, um, refugee, young people, holy fucking shit. That was one of – still today makes my heart sing because they were being schooled, you know, speak English, schooled. It's, this is the way this country runs and I just fucking turned on its head by dispelling just some of the, the truths. And, yeah, I think I created a few monsters in that session. <laughs> but, um, but, but I suppose from our, our perspective of seeing Stan Grant, again, if anybody listeners out there want to – Want to tune in? Australia Day is worth it. Worth a read. Um, how much travel that Stan does, and how he spent time in all those countries, I believe, and um, and how, how he then had to bring home what he'd experienced from twenty odd years or whatever, thirty years from being away from home, however long it was, to come home and then see the struggle of his own people, but still knowing enough of how uh, other cultures have got it fairly gnarly and um, pretty yeah. full on, you know. So, yeah, I, I think that's that's a big. St- big stepping stone and a starting point um you know obviously treaty and you know sovereign agreement uh, the international law that that binds and and, and makes the yeah. agreement right in the first place again like we've spoken about um it doesn't fix us in a, in a heartbeat but i tell you what it goes a long way um yeah. to rectifying yeah. the wrong in the first place the so. acknowledgement of the trauma that's been created is like f- f- it's such an uncomfortable it's not uncomfortable it's it's well, it's very uncomfortable and it's, it's not pleasant to recognise what's ha- what's occurred. And, you know, like it's – whilst my – whilst I didn't create these – do these things, that, that, that old argument of oh, I didn't do it, so why should I apologise? Or it's – that argument just falls so flat to me because if you didn't do it, then it should just be so much easier for you to go, let's make it right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. if you're not, you're not invested in it, you're not the one actually having to pony up and go, you know what, I fucking – murdered your brothers mm. you know i didn't actually do it so we're not that's not being requested it's like all you need to do is acknowledge fully that it occurred yep. yeah. and that in itself is very uncomfortable because there, there is an there's a, a, an acknowledgement of historical guilt as a, yep. and a and transgenerational trauma but it's it's a, it's powerful work that needs to be done and it's you know like that that line of treaty is it seems interesting that we're still having this conversation it's, it's mind-boggling to me that we're still having this conversation in 2020 
that you know the the makarata in in yep. in um, Mundujulu and this this delivery of such a powerful statement of this is what we need and this is what we require to be yet yeah, we're going to do it we're going to do yeah. it and then when it arrives in parliament we're not going to do it it's like yeah. how are we still having these conversations yeah. now yeah, yeah. it seems like a very simple process of acknowledgement and then moving forward that will fundamentally change the way that Australia yeah. has a conversation internally yeah. going yeah. forward Did but we can't get over this fucking yeah. It, it, I mean, it, it seems small and, and it seems on its face symbolic in some ways, but it's it's just such a powerful symbol of a willingness to change and move forward and actually create, yeah. create a yeah. reconciliation. Yeah, and um, did you know that John Winston Howard and Malcolm Turnbull and Tony Abbott are firemen? I know Tony Abbott's a fireman because they put cold water and put that out real quick, you know, <laughs> that fire, that spot fire. Um, <laughs> shout out to the coalition government of this country. Um, I don't care. But... Uh, Look, um, the the point of it is, is that when that came out, Malcolm Turnbull was then our prime minister, and he was quick to put that out. You know, with his fire hose advised by uh, that, that. Well, uh, when he went, when he was uh, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but like when I felt uh, from my memory, when he was in, on country, mm. in while the statement was being drawn together, he was just clapping along at the fucking songs and going, yeah, 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 we're gonna do it, yeah. we're gonna do it. And then when yeah. he got back to fucking Canberra. Yeah. Or to fucking Point Piper, yeah. it just you're right. That's when the cold water come. But when it, when he's being forced to be accountable, person yeah. to person, yeah. standing yeah. with these, you know, um, I, I'm gonna, um, Mr. Unipingu, like the yeah. he was yeah. the the, yeah. the, the, the the one of the the yeah. core, uh, yeah. you know, elders, you know, standing there face to face, and he's kind of saying, you know, Prime Minister, mm -hmm. will you do this? He's like, yes, yes, yeah. and then the disgraceful fucking piece of shit turns yeah. his back and just walks yeah. away again yeah. like it's a really it's a it's a yeah. disgraceful kind of behavior that, to say one thing mm. so clearly it's, it's to it's someone's eyes and face and yeah. then to walk away and just just he's got a mega thick book out must have a lot of excuses <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah the merchant banker from the eastern suburbs hey malcolm hey going um look yeah definitely it wasn't it it was, it was really gnarly and like i said to you guys today cheekly in the training Everybody was watching Chappelle come home, you know, yeah. and uh, that's where all the spotlights were. Unless you, you really, if you know, you know, you're right. So, um, yeah, I, I think um, to your point earlier, though, it's a bit like, and I'm sure there's listeners out there who have been cheated on or betrayed. Mm. You know, the betrayal and the cheating on this country for the first people, um, as opposed obviously to the colonizers that first came here, is over 230 years. Um, we got one, sorry, on uh, February 13th, 2008. Um, Kevin Rudd, for what it's worth, actioned something that was supposed to be done 10 years prior. I won't mention, well, I might as well mention his name, John Winston Howard, before that. Um, but I suppose the point uh, around that is, is one, sorry, going to really fix and rectify if you've cheated on someone or, you know, if you've. No, of course it's fucking not, you know. We've got yeah. to really work at this and, okay, like you said, acknowledge what, what's the number one rule in, in, like you said, in therapy or, you know, or relationship counselling. It's getting back to the problem and being accountable for it, right? Yeah. So. That's why that, that idea about, the, you know, having uh, Indigenous president tomorrow is so powerful because it's like if it's scary – what the fuck are you got to be scared about? Like, as what, in, have, what, you been what doing? have you been up to? <laughs> it's like, like, it's like giving so your, yeah. giving your, if you, if you've got to worry with giving your wife your phone, yeah, you're fucked. Yeah, exactly. Like, so you're that, fucked from before giving it to her. That, and that, that <laughs> idea of like, you know, hindsight being a beautiful thing. Well, we're giving you hindsight. Like yeah. if that happened tomorrow, what would you have done differently 10 years before yeah. to get you out of this rather sticky situation you might find yourself in? Like how could we have treated those people differently? So that they won't come back with a fucking vengeance, you know what I mean? Like yeah. if it was you on the other side, like it's such a simple idea that really, just it's. I feel it's you know this. We I mean we, we've all touched on it. That sort of like the virtuous sort of you know do good uh like do do things and talk about it on social media. But yeah. you know I'm not a racist, whatever. Yeah, like yeah. we do nothing in their daily life to fucking make mm. any. Mm. But like even just living with that sort of thought in your head. Mm. Like, what if it was me? You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. just there's small things to sort of really change, you know, that that real cultural difference. Like, it's not going to happen overnight, but it's oh, Pantene, Pantene, Pantene moment. Like, yeah. I don't know what that is. Come on, give it to us. It's, shampoo, it's a shampoo. I, I know Pantene. It won't happen. Uh, it won't happen overnight, but it, it will, will happen. happen. <laughs> 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 I've seen an Aussie one. Was, was that yeah. Jennifer Aniston? Is it? She did one. No, it was just yeah, some fucking was, Aussie Sheila. Wasn't it? <laughs> Was it? Oh, and I thought it was. Didn't Rod Stewart's missus do it? Though? Oh yeah, it was. It was. Uh, was that Rachel Hunter? Yeah, the Kiwi. Oh, the Kiwi, Kiwi one. Kiwi yeah, 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 yeah. 
Um, one other thing Christmas I wanted to talk to you about, like well, we, we already spoke quickly about, um, uh, we'll, we'll wrap you up because then you know you've had such a fucking long day. But this idea of the multicultural Australia that pre-existed and then the fact that um, I think it's one of the most in, in like – um, my mum spent quite a lot of time um, in community working as a remote area nurse yep. in Maningrida. Oh, she yeah. worked in Tennant Creek. She worked nice. in Murujulu. And I actually had the great privilege of being able to go to Murujulu and, and stay in, um, in, in, uh, like on the, on, in, what's it, in community. Yep. Um, like rolled out of bed and there's fucking wow. Uluru. It's yeah. just the most powerful thing. In that. And in community and, and yep. I got to share food and yep. um, had Mr. Cooley and his wife, uh, Miss Cooley, Mrs. Cooley cook us kangaroo tails in the fire and, yep. and with, with my little kid and my wife and my mum. My and awesome. it was, in, it was a really powerful moment for me is just being exposed to the idea that, um, and I actually met this elder very, very briefly. She wandered by the, the camp as, as we were cooking. Um, uh, they, they introduced me to her. I can't remember her name. I'm sorry, but she um, she w- w- she remembers seeing uh, I can't remember, Stuart Ayres, like the guy who discovered Ayres oh, Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, well, you know, was sorry, Ayres, 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 he named it Ayres Rock. It's obviously Uluru, but. <laughs> um, but she was she was living in community there, That's like just cool. with her family, and she, it was the first white person she'd ever seen. And there was the, literally this period of what two hundred and thirty odd years mm. of 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 settlement of a settlement of white people in Australia. But it took up until the nineteen thirties for the interior of Australia to be discovered like that, and for 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 you know black fellas to to see white fellas <laughs> and actually have this first thing, and then and then they just what happened in those communities over time it's been this drip feed of traumatic experiences or like you said the people of Wakanya maybe not maybe they had a, a settlement you know manager who wasn't as crazy as other people but the stories are disparate and not every not every aboriginal community is the same not every adi- aboriginal kind of mindset and outlook and experience has been the same and it's just it's a uh, yeah, I was wondering. You spoke to us about it today. I was wondering if you could actually like, just tell a little bit of that story, and uh, like the details to to it. Uh, uh, you know that how it's we have this narrative of in seventeen eighty eight or whatever it was, they white white people turned up, and then every single Aboriginal life was upturned, and it's yeah. just not the case. And yeah. that level of complexity is something that's just divorced from us in schools and divorce from Aboriginal conversations as well, like I yeah. can only imagine. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it's pretty gnarly when we really look at, you know, just, well, like I said this morning, a bit south of here when, you know, um, yeah, we look at 1770 um, and uh, we obviously had Jimmy C, we call him Jimmy Cook, uh, <laughs> come in and um, he uh, discovered this country um, which we know is not true. Um, anyway, you've probably been under a rock if uh, you don't know that, but you probably know it now. Um, but uh, I think the the part around um, you know Governor Philip coming in uh, eighteen years later and then you know, proclaiming the penal colony of New South Wales is a history we're probably all sort of somewhat familiar with. But um, to your point, it's um, this is a big big landmass. Eh? You know, this is a mm. This is a lot of, like we've seen today, 600 different dialects and within that there encompasses lots of different skin groups and again the moiti and the universal binding system of how we all work in our laws, the living laws. So the biggest difference between Indigenous law and, and white man law is, like my grandfather, this is, comes from my grandfather, he says the white man law can be changed at the flick of a pen in his day, that's how it was, right? They wrote the laws and... So they can be changed at a flick of a pen under the Westminster system. Our laws are living and been here forever. We can't change our living laws. They are what they are. So they're a breathing law, and they either come through the trees or the that that piece of um, that 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 waterway, or you know that particular budjan or collective of bird. You know whatever it is, it's all connected to the elements, and that's what I was speaking about before, and how important that is. And um, you know the the mindset and um, what people probably uh don't recognize as much and again it's one of my key messaging that you heard today is that um that timeline is 150 to 180 years that that colonization and arguably still today is still happening in many many well it is it's not arguably it is um happening in in 2020 and um the um and that's the point you know our histories are going to be different 
throughout 150 years. We're still a very green country, you know, in many respects com- in comparison to others. Um, but it's just a really strong footnote for me to remind people that that's quite a long time that colonisation's actually been happening. You know? mm. And yeah, and and so and the colouring of it is so different. You know, if you're in the uh, the the experience of 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 an indoctrination and uh, exposure to kind of white culture, I suppose, is so fundamentally fundamentally different if you're from you know the central desert yeah. regions and AP wildlands as opposed to you know Sydney. And it, you know, the, it's, and they've. I'm sure the the common story, unfortunately, is one of dispossession and, and pain. Yep. Um, but they are. I think it's the one thing that kind of stuck out for me is that the complexity of this story is to is so great. Um, and the one thing we lack, and the one thing we tend to do, is we just think about the Aboriginal problem or is- Aboriginal yeah. issues yep. and we lump these conversations that are so nuanced and so complicated and so so individual and so des- deserving of their own stories. Mm. We lump them into one big thing and even then we fucking ignore it because it's too big, you know, or, or seemingly too big. But, yeah, look, I, I we've, we've been talking for an hour 20 and I know you've had a big day of talking and we'll wrap it up, but I, I suppose I just – I'm just so grateful to have spent today with you and, and thank you for being, like I said at the start, so vulnerable with us and, and so instructive and I really hope to continue a relationship with you going forward, um, both within our company and group and um, through cultural awareness training but also through conversation and love to have you back on the podcast to talk about what you're doing and, 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 and continue to discover the stories of, of your people and maybe talk a little bit about your dreaming and, and uh, the, future, your, the, the culture and the future, yeah, going forward. Mm. We'll get down to the South Coast. Aye. Yeah, I'd love I to do that. that. Yeah, thank you so much, man. It's been a, a privilege to have such access to such honest and truthful answers and representation of like something that's very complicated and you could spend – he spent hours trying to troll through books and, you know, mm. media, if there's anything of real worth in there, I suppose. But, yeah, it's been a, a, a privilege just to have that upfront honesty and transparency. Thank yeah. you so much. We really, like, truly appreciate it. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks, lads. And it's, um, you know, it, it, it really is about this, it's, uh, sitting at the table and, you know, buying into the process. And, and that's, um, you know, all credit to you, followers, for having me here and, as we all know, we can we can open up dialogue and, and conversate about lots of different different things. And the more spaces we hold like this, you know, whether it is podcast or whether it's just general conversation or whatever yeah. it is, um, the better we're all going to be. So um, now nah, I've had a, I've had a blast. Um, I suppose we can uh, go and have some more riveting conversations. Uh, see the day <laughs> out. Um, yeah, exactly. There's some pretty gnarly ones that got unearthed to you, but um, yeah, I've had fun in the uh, former u- former urinal. It's uh, <laughs> been uh, very aesthetic. Tell your and I'm very mate. impressed. <laughs> Kenny still studio. pisses in here occasionally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I feel like you've definitely yeah. done that. Yeah, pe- peace and love, brothers. And uh, just remember for everybody out there, one of my philosophies is today's the first day for the rest of your life. So, peace out. Love you. Thank okay, you so thanks, much. Man. Ciao.